That's Marco Rubio, the NRA's thirsty personal wallet. Marco Antonio Rubio was born to Cuban immigrants in Miami, Florida in 1971. Rubio's parents immigrated from Cuba to the U.S. in 1956, but that didn't stop Rubio from brewing up his own, more politically inspired version of the story. As a rising force, Rubio claimed his parents were forced out of Cuba by Castro, but in reality, Castro didn't take over until three years after his parents had already immigrated. I wish I would have known the date. I would have gotten it right. I would have said, came before Castro. Either Rubio is real bad with dates, or he used a fake talking point to cheat respect with Florida's vast post-exile Cuban population. After somehow graduating high school with a 2.1 GPA, Rubio received a scholarship to play football at Tarkio University, a school in the middle of nowhere, Missouri. According to Salon, the century-old college was on the brink of shuttering after record low enrollment numbers. The school admitted everyone who applied before filing for bankruptcy a year after Rubio dropped out. Teammates recall of Rubio's ghost-like presence. One said, I know he showed up to play football and I remember him suiting up for the team picture, but that's about it. Another said, my memory of him is hanging out in the weight room, sitting on the bench and ragging on guys for not being able to lift enough. We used to tell him, get the hell out of here if you're not doing anything. I was more nervous before my first college football game because you were actually going to get hit. After not even getting the chance to get hit, he dropped out. Later, Rubio transferred to a community college and then finished his undergraduate career at the University of Florida. In 1996, Rubio got his JD from the University of Miami School of Law. After obtaining a law degree, Rubio started working his way up the ladder of Republican politics. In 1999, he was elected to the Florida House of Representatives and held office for eight years. As Speaker of the House, Rubio frequently used his GOP credit card for personal expenses. He used the credit card to repair his family's minivan for $4,000 and dropped $143 on a men's haircut. It's unclear why this haircut was so expensive. And now I have to spend all my time explaining how I use the card instead of talking about public policy. All in all, Rubio's personal expenses added up to $16,052. The party covered the rest on the card, which was $93,566. In 2010, Rubio worked his way up to the U.S. Senate thanks to endorsements from great people like Sarah Palin, Rudy Giuliani, and famous war proponent Dick Cheney. Rubio's time in the Senate has been largely spent attacking women's health. Roe versus Wade is, is bad constitutional law. He sided with pro-life issues 100% of the time and believes, in abortion cases, there should be no exceptions for rape and incest. Rubio has time and time again voted to defund Planned Parenthood. I'm going to vote to defund it, um, third, and I have problems with what Planned Parenthood does and ultimately what the aims of their organization is. Of course, Rubio wouldn't be in the position of power he's in if it weren't for the NRA, who has contributed over $3.3 million to him. Just a year after six adults and 20 children were murdered in the Sandy Hook school shooting, Rubio said he doesn't support expanding background checks for purchasing firearms. And in the wake of the Parkland shooting, where 17 people were killed in Rubio's home state, he couldn't say he'd stop taking money from the NRA. Senator Rubio, can you tell me right now that you will not accept a single donation from the NRA in the future? Rubio stumbled and then... You have every right to ask that question of me, and I'm here to okay, tell I'll you that I will stand for the things... Are you going to be accepting things. money from the I, in the future? I, I've always supported... I will always accept the help of anyone who agrees with my agenda. Before Rubio got grilled by a teenage school shooting survivor, he decided to run for president in 2016. His main agenda seemed to take aim at one former steak salesman, Donald J. Trump. If he hadn't inherited $200 million, you know where Donald no, no, Trump no, would no, be no. right now? No, no, Selling no. watches in Manhattan. Thought... Donald is not going to make America great. He's going to make America orange. And you know what they say about men with small hands? You can't trust them. Guys, we have a con artist as the front runner in the Republican Party. Later, Rubio endorsed the con artist with small hands. And he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. 
It appears Rubio was a never-Trumper when campaigning in the 2016 presidential race primaries, but now he's all about a guy he once called an erratic individual who can't be trusted with our nuclear codes. The time for fighting each other is over. It's time to come together and fight for a new direction for America. Rubio's support for the former steak salesman continues. In June of 2019, Rubio tweeted, it's official, hashtag keep America great. To maintain his seat in the Senate, Rubio will seemingly lean far into Trump's agenda and help steer it through the Republican-controlled Senate for as long as he's in office.